Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me today. My name is Andy Yoon and I'm a Senior Solutions Engineer with Century One, and I'll be your host for this presentation. First, let me just introduce you to Century One. We are industry leading producers of a suite of products that help you monitor, diagnose, and optimize your Microsoft data stack. Many know us for either SQL Sentry, which monitors your traditional SQL servers, and or for Plan Explorer, which is our free tool which allows you to work with your execution plans in ways that are not possible within Management Studio. But as you can see from this product listing, we cover much more of the Microsoft Data platform. We can give you insight into activity on SQL Server Analysis Services. Or if you're virtualized, we can give you insight into host level activity that would otherwise be adversely affecting your SQL Server virtual machines. Now, if you've moved your SQL servers into the cloud, we can help you there too. Are you using AWS EC2 or Azure VMs? Or maybe you're leveraging AWS RDS, Azure SQL Database, or Azure Managed Instances. Not to worry, we have you fully covered. Or more than just monitoring for the operational DBA. We offer products that also aid you in development and business intelligence to fully support you throughout the data development and operations life cycle. Now, don't take my word for it. Here's a list of some well-known large enterprises that all utilize Century One. And as you can see from the list here, our customers come from numerous different industries, but they all share one commonality, the need for best-in-class visibility and performance in their data platform. Now, Century One is very community focused. We're very closely aligned with PASS and have been for a very long time. We're a longtime sponsor of the annual PASS Summit Conference. We offer our free phenomenal tool to the uh, community, uh, Plan Explorer, as I mentioned earlier. And we also operate sqlperformance.com, which brings you great deep dive content from a number of industry experts. And finally, we're proud to have unparalleled expertise on our staff. A number of us are very well known in the SQL Server community and or Microsoft MVPs. So today what I'm gonna be doing is giving you a quick tour of what Century One has to offer. This tour will, and demo will be focused on our monitoring capabilities. So with that, let's dive right on in. Okay, so now we're looking at SQL Sentry and the Performance Advisor dashboard. On the left-hand side, we're presenting to you a number of key metrics about what's going on in the operating system level of this server. So your CPU utilization, your server level memory utilization and network and disk IO information. And on the right-hand side, we're presenting to you key SQL Server level metrics. So information about wait stats, information about batches and transactions per second, SQL Server memory utilization and or database IO. In our current auto refresh mode, we're giving you updates once every 10 seconds. So we offer you a tremendous amount of granularity. But on the other hand, I'm not constrained to just looking at the past 30 minutes of activity. Maybe I might wanna jump back in time to see what happened earlier today, perhaps say overnight when we say ran our overnight processing. So I can go up here to my start and end dates and change this up to an arbitrary time period of whatever I want it to be. So in this case, I'm just gonna change it up to around midnight-ish to around 8 a.m.-ish. And now you'll see that this dashboard will rescale itself. And now it's gonna give me a wider perspective of time. Here we go. So now I can very clearly see that, hey, we had this interesting spike in activity that started around 3 a.m. Maybe that corresponds with when we were doing nightly processing. So that may be something that I may need to dive into and jump into. So it's very easy to maneuver around across time periods within Century One. Right now we're looking at this wider eight hour period of time, but I'm just gonna highlight this period of time, right click and zoom on in. And now I'm refocusing the dashboard into this smaller period of time that's of interest to me. So now I can dive in even deeper. So now I can kind of take a look around the dashboard and see interesting things about what's going on. But one thing that I like to do is highlight a key area of the dashboard, maybe, you know, in this case, this big spike in SQL Server weights, and notice that all the other charts also get highlighted in this key period of time. So when I sample my SQL Server weights, I see that we have some CX packet weights going on here. On the other hand, I can quickly now visually correlate on the CPU chart that actually, you know, we weren't using that much CPU. So was parallelism really an issue here? On the other hand, I do see an interesting spike in transactions per second, which also have a corresponding spike in key lookups. And then if I look at my 
SQL Server memory graphs, I see that we have a big drop in page life expectancy and a big increase in page read faults. So all this information tells me that, you know what, maybe I actually want to look for code that did a lot of I.O. during this period of time. But hopefully you get a better appreciation of how simply being able to highlight and quickly visually correlate uh, these different symptoms together allows me to very quickly gather more information and figure out where I need to go next. And speaking of going next, let's talk about that now. Now that I've gathered some information about this interesting period of time, I now want to dive even deeper. So I'm going to highlight uh, this period of time. And then I'm going to make use of the right-click jump to functionality. And notice we have a wide number of options available to us here. The jump to functionality is what allows us to move laterally throughout Century Once while remaining focused on a period of time of interest or something else. So for example, I could take us over to our event calendar, which will show me uh, different events that occurred on the SQL Server in an Outlook style format. Or maybe we happen to be on a server that has a lot of blocking and deadlocks. So I may just want to go to my blocking tab or my deadlocks tab straight away. But typically, a lot of people will want to know what workload and what queries were running during this period of time that caused this kind of uh, resource utilization. So we're going to take you over to Top SQL. So in Top SQL, we present to you four different tabs of information. But I'll, for today's purpose, I'm just going to cover completed queries. So inside completed queries at the top third here, we're presenting to you batch information. So these are all the long running queries that occurred during this period of time. We capture all queries that have a duration of five seconds or longer. So you know, from up here, I can sort by duration or CPU. In this case, we're already sorted by logical reads. And I see a number of different pieces of code that were seemingly my top logical read consumers. But here's the thing. Looking at these records from this perspective doesn't give me as much insight as to what happened from a workload perspective. So on the other hand, I'm gonna make use of the show totals button up here, which will aggregate together all identical queries. So once I've resorted by total reads, now I have a much clearer picture that these two stored procedures, which were executed 26 times in the period of time that I've selected, were two thirds of the IO during this period of time. And that's, that's a heck of a lot of I.O. So now I can dive in deeper and take a look at some of these pieces of code. But now I have this perspective from a workload perspective, not just an individual query perspective. Now, if I were to select a different example like this batch, of course, a batch itself can have numerous T-SQL statements in it, right? So what we do is that we have the statements tab here in the middle that brings you even more information about what's going on on the statement level. Uh, so this way you can drill into that batch and find those troublesome statements rather than having to sift through all of those statements manually. So now you know exactly what will, which statements within that batch caused you the most resource headaches and, uh, and pain. And finally, you have the query history histogram down here at the bottom, which shows you a full history of this piece of code and how it's been executed. Because I argue that you should always be asking yourself, how does a piece of code run normally? What's your baseline? And this is exactly it. So I have a separate range slider here, so I can take this back several days to look at a wider period of time. And each of these different dots represents a different execution of this piece of code. So now I can dive in even deeper, or if I wanted to, I can uh, look at it from different uh, permutations or different angles. Instead of duration, maybe I want to look at it from a CPU utilization perspective or an IO utilization perspective. But this is extremely invaluable to, be, again, have a better understanding of how does this piece of code that I'm focused on and trying to troubleshoot, how does it run normally? When does it run normally? So this is just a sampling of the type of insight that we can give you uh, in SQL Server through the dashboard and top SQL. And of course, we're just scraping the surface. Now what I want to do is switch gears a little bit and, and show you a little bit about what we can do for you if you happen to be running SQL Server Analysis Services. I'm pulling up Redmond BIO2, which is a multi-dimensional instance of SSAS, but we can also support tabular. And as you can see from this dashboard, it looks very similar to that of SQL Server, or SQL Sentry, I should say. So again, on the left-hand side, we're presenting to you key metrics about what's going on on the server level. But on the right-hand side, now I'm presenting you a number of key metrics as to what's going on within SSAS. 
So I show you information about the formula engine and the storage engine, whether we have high volume of processing versus uh, querying that happens to be occurring at a given period of time. Now, one thing that's unique to us that I really like to point out is this average time chart, which allows me to kind of get a better sense of where was SSAS spending its time. We will take a calculate and look at all of the other different metrics that SSAS was reporting to be able to then come up with this calculation of what was the average time that was being spent in what type of work SSAS happened to be doing. So this is what can give you a tremendous amount of insight into SSAS and help point you in the right direction as to whether you're experiencing a bottleneck in the formula engine or in the storage engine, or if you just happen to have a lot of processing that was occurring during a given period of time. Now, just like we have top SQL inside a regular SQL server, we can now go over to top commands, which gives me insight into the different queries and or commands that were running during this period of time, but on SSAS. So for example, I happen to see these different queries here. These are all running during this period of time. And then if I were to say unsync this and expand this out to where I had time earlier, let me just go do this and just jump back to say 249. I want to go back and find my commands, the, my, my processing commands. So as you can see, as I expand into the details here, now I can show you the measure groups and the different partitions and how much time we happen to be spending, you know, say in the underlying SQL queries and the volume of rows that are being processed. Or if I were to look at some of the queries that are running at the same time, I can give you information about that. That's kind of a boring little query right there, but you see that we spent a fair amount of time in the formula engine in this example. We didn't move very much data around, but we had to do a lot of calculations. So, you know, you see from the underlying code here, so that way you can, again, dive even deeper into your SSAS uh, workloads and figure out what's going on from there. So, let me switch gears here now and give you a little bit of an overview about what we can do for your virtualized SQL servers. So I'm gonna jump over to this particular SQL server, VMSE Win SQL 1. And let's pretend that we're investigating activity on this SQL server and we're trying to find out what's causing the slowness on the SQL server. But as we're looking around the SQL server, maybe the activity that we happen to be seeing is seemingly normal. There's not much going on here that's really all that unusual. And we're kind of uh, sitting here scratching our heads. Now, in the upper left-hand corner, notice that this is tagged as a VM or VM. And I have a hyperlink up here that takes me up to the VMware host because we happen to be using a product called vSentry, which gives me visibility into the host level. So if I click on the VMware host, now I'm presented with a new dashboard, and now I'm actually looking at the, uh, the host level activity. So on the left-hand side, I'm seeing the actual resource utilization on this host, not what was going on from the VM's perspective. And on the right-hand side, instead of, say, SQL servers, uh, now I'm seeing resource utilization as broken up by different VMs. So if I hover over any of these different color codes, I can now see what the resource utilization distribution happened to be. So, for example, this brown uh, band here happened to be WinSQL 1. This light colored here was, uh, you know, S1 Client 1. But notice, say, at around 2 o'clock, VMSE AG5 suddenly had this big spike in CPU utilization. And let's pretend that AG5 is a DR node for my availability groups. It's not supposed to have any activity. So I might ask myself, hey, wait a minute, why was AG5 suddenly having some activity? And remember the jump to functionality I showed you earlier? Well, this is an example where I'm now going to jump down to that VM's dashboard and now start investigating activity that occurred on that VM. So this will give me a, even additional insight into what's going on, not just you know, on a given SQL server or a given VM, but this allows me to move vertically throughout my environment as well. Because oftentimes we have situations with noisy neighbors and things of that nature. Okay, so with that, I hope you found uh, this little brief overview of some of what Sentry One can do for you useful. One thing I want to emphasize is that we have a certified training program that's available to you. Sure, there's a lot of capabilities that we bring to bear. And, you know, one of the things that we are all about from as from a company perspective or a cultural perspective is that we want to 
enable you with as many resources as possible so that you can quickly come up to speed uh, using our product suite. So this certified training program is relatively new. It's all on demand, all online, and best of all, it's free. So you don't even have to pay anything for this. This is how dedicated we are to our customers to make sure that we arm you with all of the resources you need so you can all get up to speed quickly. That's how committed we are to you guys. So with that, I just wanna say thank you very much for your time. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Century One or diving in even deeper, I would encourage you to go check out a trial. You can go download a trial right now from this URL and it's fully featured. So you can light up your SQL servers, you can light up SSAS, you can light up your SQL servers up in the cloud. And then if you wanna dive in even deeper, I would uh, strongly recommend booking a full one hour demo with either myself or one of the other members of the solutions engineering team at that second URL there, book a demo. In which case we will uh, get to know you a little bit better and then we'll take you on a deep dive into uh, Century One and focus in on the features and priorities that you happen to want to know more about. So with that, thank you again for your time. I really appreciate this and I hope you found this valuable. Have a great day, everyone.